A very good evening and welcome to evening prayer from St Michael at the Northgate Church in Oxford. For various technical reasons, today we're uh, not streaming from there, as you can probably tell, but wherever you are watching, whenever you are watching, you are very welcome. We begin with words of scripture. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults, Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our psalm for this evening is Psalm 61. Hear my crying, O God, give ear unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I call upon, upon thee, when my heart is in heaviness. O set me up upon the rock that is higher than I, for thou hast been my hope and a strong tower for me against the enemy. I will dwell in thy tabernacle for ever, and my trust shall be under the covering of thy wings. For thou, O Lord, hast heard my, dis my desires, 
and has given an heritage unto those that fear thy name. Thou shalt grant the king a long life, that his years may endure throughout all generations. He shall dwell before God for ever. O prepare thy loving mercy and faithfulness, that they may preserve him. So will I always sing praise unto thy name, that I may daily perform my vows. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our lesson from the Old Testament is from the book of Job, chapter 42. Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. You asked, Who is this that obscures my plans without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, Listen now, and I will speak, I will question you, and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore I despise myself, and repent in dust and ashes. After the Lord had said these things to Job, he said to Eliphaz the Temanite, I am angry with you and your two friends, because you have not spoken the truth about me, as my servant Job has. So now take seven bulls and seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and sacrifice a burnt offering for yourselves. My servant Job will pray for you, and I will accept his prayer, and not deal with you according to your folly. You have not spoken the truth about me, as my servant Job has. So Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuite, and Zophar the Naphathite did what the Lord told them, and the Lord accepted Job's prayer. After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. All his brothers and sisters and everyone who had known him before came and ate with him in his house. They comforted and consoled him over all the trouble the Lord had brought on him and each one gave him a piece of silver and a gold ring. The Lord, the Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the former part. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a 1,000 yoke of oxen, oxen and a 1,000 donkeys, and he also had seven sons and three daughters. The first daughter he named Jemima, the second Kesia, and the third Kerin Hapuk. Nowhere in all the land were there found women as beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father granted him an inheritance along granted them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this Job lived a hundred and forty years, he saw his children and their children to the fourth generation, and so Job died, an old man and full of years. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the loneliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their, from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And our lesson from the New Testament is taken from the 16th chapter of Paul's Epistle to the Romans, beginning at verse 17. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them. For such people are not serving our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. 
Everyone has heard about your obedience, so I rejoice because of you. But I want you to be wise about what is good, and innocent about what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Timothy, my co-worker, sends his greetings to you, as do Lucius, Jason and Sosipater, my fellow Jews. I, Tertius, who wrote down this letter, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, whose hospitality I and the whole church here enjoy, sends you his greetings. Erastus, who is the city's director of public works, and our brother Cortus, send you their greetings. Now to him, who is able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ, in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all the Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from faith. To the only wise God be glory for ever, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Here endeth our New Testament lesson. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. The Collect for last Sunday, the fourth Sunday after Trinity. O God, the protector of all that trust in thee, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us thy mercy, that, thou being our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we finally lose not the things eternal. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
today around the world the church celebrates the teachings and the life of St. Benedict, uh, often called the founder of Western monasticism. And Benedict and his example and his guidance, his rule of life, has been an inspiration for generations about how to live in community. Indeed, in monasteries themselves, but also in all our communities, in all our groups. How do we treat each other? How do we live our lives so the whole community lives its life well? If we were to set a rule of life for any community that we are in and for our, ourselves as part of that community, what might that look like? We all tend to have rules of life, uh, informal or formal. Uh, many of us just live lives happily without thinking about what rule we are following. But there will be a routine, there will be a pattern, there will be values, there will be behaviours. And Benedict constructed a rule of life in order, as I say, for communities to live well. What is our rule of life as a nation, as a local community, as a church? And in our readings today, we have much wisdom about relationships. The ending of the book of Job, that remarkable and strange book, uh, full of thoughts about suffering and how we cope with that. Job's friends have handled it not all that well throughout, but he prays for them. Job himself is humble and says, I've concerned myself with things too wonderful to know, and I don't understand everything. And that's a good and a wise position to be in as we look around the world and in our own lives. As we turn to God in prayer, he sees the big picture somewhat better than we do. And for Paul, Romans chapter 16, he loves to name the people who have helped him. The first half of, half of the chapter is full of names who have shared his ministry. And then in the second half, he mentions others. Uh, we just noticed that Erastus, city's director of public works, uh, clearly there are people of fairly high social status who are alongside Paul in his ministry. We also have the name of the writer, I, Tertius, who wrote down this letter, Greet you in the Lord. But Paul is concerned that the, the Christians in Rome aren't going to be led astray. He warns them against teachers who seek not to honour Christ, but simply want to uh, serve their own appetites. Quite often, perhaps, we cause division arguments because actually we are serving our own appetites and not the greater good. It's always good if somewhat challenging to, to look at our motives for why we're making a fuss about this particular issue, to look at our motives when we're trying to lead people in a certain direction. For Paul, it's all about helping individuals and the community grow in their knowledge and love and faith in Christ and their love for God and their love for others. As so often, Paul prays, the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. And perhaps this evening and tomorrow and into next week, whomever we meet, whoever we think about, perhaps we could silently pray or say, or both, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. And in offering grace to others, we are mindful of our own need of grace and our thanksgiving for that. And it just lifts the community, the conversation maybe to another level. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you. And to our final prayers. Almighty God, we thank you for St. Benedict, for his inspiration, for his wisdom. We thank you for all those who seek to build communities that work well, in love, in fellowship, in labour, in hospitality. We pray that we would be good and wise and humble members of whatever communities we are part of. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for any tonight who are feeling lonely, who perhaps don't feel part of a fellowship or a community, or where things have gone wrong in relationships. We pray for your healing touch and your restoration. We pray for reconciliation where needed. And we pray that we would always be welcoming to those who perhaps feel on the outside. 
Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who does from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth, most heartily we beseech, ye with, beseech thee with thy favour to behold our most gracious Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that she may always incline to thy will, and walk in thy way. Endue her plenteously with heavenly gifts, grant her in health and wealth long to live, strengthen her that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies, and finally after this life she may attain everlasting joy and felicity, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and does promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Tomorrow at 8 o'clock the doors of St Michael's will be open for any who wish to come to our short service of Holy Communion. Perhaps you could let me know if you're thinking of coming so we can have a rough idea of numbers. At 10.30 our sung matins will be streamed from St Michael's. And then on Monday at 5.30 our brief, brief slot of seven thoughts about interesting people from history and we are looking at Isaac Newton. And the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all, evermore. Amen.